How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm gonna to review this Wise 48 volt server rack battery. Sometimes it says 48 volts, other times it says 51.2 volts. Because these are lithium iron phosphate batteries, nominally they are 3.2 volts each and they string them together in series to create a higher voltage. So when you buy these batteries, they're always in multiples of 3.2 volts. When you get to such a high voltage of 48 volts, you might either have 15 of them string together or 16 of them string together. This corresponds to 48 volts like it is in this one or 51.2 volts. Once you go 15 string, if you want to put more in parallel, you also have to buy another 15 string battery. If you have a 16 string server rack already, you have to buy another 16 string. I'm not quite sure if you could actually upgrade this, but we're gonna open this up and check it out. Honestly, I've never heard of this brand until they reached out to me, but they are on the best seller list on automotive batteries on Amazon. And if you look at how much they sell in a single month of these motorcycle batteries, 4,000 a month. So they know their batteries. Let's see what's inside this battery. Let's flip that on. 49.62. I'm pretty sure there's only 15 strings in this thing. The last server rack battery I looked at, it had an AC breaker here. AC breakers do not break as fast and there's not as much distance between it after they break. That's because when passing AC voltage, at least 60 times a second, it's self extinguishing because the voltage reaches a zero volt. So when it crosses zero, if there is an arc, it disappears completely. However, for DC voltages like these, if an arc forms, the DC never really goes away. And so the arc keeps on going and it creates a short circuit because there's an arc there. And so for DC breakers, they actually break further apart. And when they break, they try to split across from each other as fast as possible. This prevents arcs from forming in the first place. So let's take a look at this one and see if it's DC capable. This is a Chint branded breaker. This is supposed to work between 60 and 110 volts. I was told by this company that this breaker is really used as a switch only. The BMS would take care of any kind of disconnection if there is an overcurrent situation. Fiberglass covering. Yep, 15 cells. Because these are welded in place, it's gonna be a lot difficult to just add another cell if you want a 16 string. For space reasons, you see there's an extra hole right here. This is foam, and it's just a matter of energy density. If you have a hole here, you can't put a cell in here to put more energy in this same space. We can see a bimetal temperature sensor. So this can sense high and low temperature, but it's actually a little looser than I would want it to be. Oh, it just came off. I do like how these metal hold downs have rubber gaskets on it. Make it so that it won't cut into your battery. And it has holes above all the vent holes in the battery. It matches up right over these vent holes. The batteries could vent in the event that they get really hot instead of exploding. Can remove this guy and this panel here. This whole thing should slide right out. The red wire is six gauge, 200 C capable. 13.3 millimeter cross section cable. And then we have five black wires coming from the negative terminal. They're all 12 gauge, 200 C capable. Each 12 gauge is 3.3 millimeter cross section. So a total of 16 and a half millimeter. So these guys will get a little warm because they're six gauge, but it's all within spec because this is not gonna melt. It's a 200 C cable. Think of the BMS as something that sits between the battery and the output terminal. This thing will essentially cut off all connection between the negative terminal and the output terminal on the front interface. So there's a whole bunch of FETs over here that will turn on and off depending on the state of the battery, if the temperature is high or low, and it also does some battery balancing with these 16 different wires. These lead up to the positive and negative terminals and also in between each cell. So it can monitor each individual cell and make sure they're all the same. This bracket comes right off, can remove that, and it locks this breaker into place right here. I really like how it uses a ferrule and it does this six lobe crimp, which makes it very, very secure. And it uses a 100 amp Shy Hang BMS. No fancy wireless connectivity or anything to draw extra power. Personally, I like it more like this because I don't like the extra vampire power. Right now it's charging at 20 amps. Let's cool this internal battery sensor and see if we can stop it from charging. This temperature sensor should only be between zero and 55 C. Right there, it turns off, warm it back up. It turns right back on. Great, cold temperature test pass. And let's do a hot temperature test.
just turned off again. My inverter's complaining because the battery got cut off. It's resume charging. I measured a capacity of 96.4 amp hours. The total capacity is supposed to be 100 amp hours. So the actual charge in this charge voltage is 53.9 that I did and 40.8 volts minimum. The absolute maximum is 54.75 volts, but I only charge it to 53.9 volts. The absolute minimum is 37.5 volts and I discharge it to 40.8 volts. I'm likely missing the 3.6% capacity because I did not charge it all the way up to the fully maximum and also discharge it to the absolute minimum. A few percentage off is close enough for me, so capacity verified. After I remove these thermal sensors, I actually glue them back with proper thermal glue. I can't believe I'm using it this many times in the past month or so. It was right here. I have a 5,000 watt inverter, so I can definitely go very close to the limit of this thing. The inverter just by itself, not driving anything, uses about one amp. Let's turn on this heater. We're doing 11 amps, 13 amps. Turn on this heater. 25, 27 amps, 32 amps. Over here, it shows the same thing, 38 amps. We'll turn on this one too. 65 amps, it's pretty crazy here. Okay, I'll turn on the heat gun too. It's a little bit over. Let me turn off this one first. 95 amps. Let's go over a little bit too. 105 amps. We see the voltage droop a little bit, 46.8 volts, 103 amps. Let me touch the cable. For short duration, the cable shouldn't warm up too much. Does 100 amps just fine. Thanks for watching this video. If you guys are interested in this server rack battery, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below.